Hi everybody, my name is Elle and in today's short video I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about taxidermy forms and discussing the benefits and the downsides to the forms that are available and why you might use one over another. I hope you find it useful and if you have any questions just drop them in the comments beneath and I'll do my best to get back to you. So the first method that I'm going to discuss with you is styrofoam and it's also known as blue foam. It's really readily available from most model makers, but I buy it as insulation sheeting. It's just a little bit cheaper if you do it that way. And just as the name suggests, it comes in these enormous sheets. And if you think about the scale of the birds that I work on, I mostly work on small to medium birds. The economy out of a sheet like that is astronomical. If I'm really clever with how I cut it, which you can do with either a hacksaw, a serrated saw, or even just a beaked knife, you can get hundreds of birds out of that sheet. They're really reasonable. They're about eight pounds per sheet, so a material stretch is really far. So it's great for a hobbyist or someone new to the industry that doesn't want to invest a lot of money. So the one thing that I really like about styrofoam is the finish on the forms. You can use a fine grade sandpaper with the forms and it gives a really, really smooth but yet really rigid form and you can get nice accuracy from your measurements. The only downside for me is that with styrofoam, because of the structure of the foam, it's quite difficult to penetrate wires through on a first time. You normally have to create a channel which you can do with a drill or you can do with a little bit of wire and a hammer beforehand, which obviously adds a little bit of complexity to it. But it is quite straightforward and if you have any questions about that specific part of the process, just let me know. The other thing I like about it is it's really, really quick. You can work with it extremely fast and make modifications in seconds. So it's a really good hobbyist material. It's what I like to use for my small birds. And the other thing as well is it works really harmoniously in conjunction with two-part polyurethane foam. So if you get a little bit excited and you take too much off, it just needs a little bit of two-part. You can mix up to your desired amount and you can just add it back in and carve it down with a beaked knife and it works really well and you get that smooth finish. So you don't have to worry when you put your skin on that you're gonna get smacks or anything like that. So the next one I'd like to talk to you about is balsa wood. And this is again, really easy to find. Any model maker will sell it, but it is a little bit more expensive than the styrofoam. It comes in lots of different thicknesses in lengths of three by two or two by four and it's really easy to work with, it's nice and soft. If you are buying the greater thicknesses of balsa wood then you're going to need a band saw to cut it down. I just get the thinner pieces. However, with the thinner pieces, the downside is you're going to have to cut each component out separately and glue it all together. So you'll take your measurements and you'll draw around your carcass as I've done there. You can cut it just with a beak knife, any, any kind of carving knife um, or model making tool or a little hacksaw. But then you're going to need to glue each piece together. So this feels very blue Peter, but here is one. It's not being carved yet, but they have been glued. However, it's very time consuming. If you want to get on with a bird straight away, you're not going to be able to do it if you have to wait for this to dry. So you'll just use PVA glue, any water-based glue is fine. It is quite structurally sound once it's together, but you do have to wait. Um, I use just a bench, a bench vise, or I can use a, a bench grip just to keep it together while it dries. However, when it is all dry, and here is one I made earlier, um, this is a really gorgeous way of working. You can see that the wires take to it beautifully. You get a really nice anatomical accuracy with your definition. And actually making one of these little maquettes and keeping it on your desk, if you do want to stick with balsa wood, is a really good way of understanding where everything goes. So I definitely would recommend it, though it is a little bit more expensive than the styrofoam. So the next one I'd like to talk about is wood wool. Wood wool is essentially wood slivers and we're using a really fine graded in taxidermy. It's very readily available. You can actually purchase it from the hamper and packaging industry. It's quite reasonable, but I don't feel like the material stretches quite as far as a styrofoam because you need to use quite a lot in order to compact it down to get the shape that you need. So here is a little one that I made. It's for a bird and you can see I've left the thread off just to show you that this is how we bind it together. When you're binding it, you want to be squeezing it really tight and if you spray it with water, it also helps. I find that's a little tip there. Um, but there are a couple of drawbacks to this method. I find that if you get a little bit too excited and you're not referring to your measurements as you should be and you put too much on, it's very hard to take it off. If you start cutting into it with a, a scalpel or a knife, everything will start to shred, you'll get thread everywhere and you get lots of snacks. So that's definitely a downside. You have to be quite accurate with what you're doing. 
However, it is a very traditional technique. It's been around for hundreds of years. So if you're a taxidermist that wants to lean into the more traditional side, then this is a great method for you. It does take a little bit of experience to get your form correct. If it's not tight enough, your wires will not go through. So you really want to be squeezing as you're wrapping and don't use thread that's too thick. There are some taxidermists who are using this as their primary medium. It's not my primary medium. I much prefer more of the carving, but I have a brain where I like a block and I can see what I need to cut away. If you're somebody that can start with nothing and build up, then this is a good method for you. Uh, check out Alicia Good in the United States. She does amazing woodwork forms. She makes it look very easy and I'm sure she would not mind me directing traffic to her if you need any advice or help with the woodwork forms. The next form that I'd like to talk to you about are the commercial forms or the polyurethane form. It's often poured into a fiberglass mold and then you get your coffee out of that mold. Now I do have a fair bit to say about these. There is a lot of controversy on the internet surrounding taxidermists who use these forms and personally I find that quite unreasonable. There is nothing wrong with using a commercial form, especially if you're new to the industry and you want to start concentrating on one of the other one million things there are to learn about taxidermy. Personally, I would love to see more taxidermists figuring out things like tanning and preserving their skins and worry about their body forms later than have a taxidermist work really hard to create a body form and put it under a skin that's not preserved properly and will fall prey to decay. I think that these are a really good jumping off point. They're obviously generic, so they will need quite a lot of modification, but they are gonna give you a pretty good result nine times out of 10. And I would just like to say that there is an incredible range, very inexpensive online. Um, I'd like to shout out Marc Bougier, who's doing incredible work in Malta. I'll give you an example of his work. He does forms anywhere from a swan right down to tiny blue tit and look how cute this is. Oh. Um, so they're really inexpensive, there's loads of choice, and like I say, they're a good place to start. At the beginning, when you're first starting out, confidence is what you need. And if you're going to get a good result with, with forms like this, 9 times out of 10, then why not start with this, build your confidence up, and then when you get to a point where you think, you know what, I've mastered some of the other things, I've wired the wings, I've wired the legs, my bird is standing, then perhaps you can go back and figure out how to make your form from scratch. So the next method that I would like to talk to you about is a method that unfortunately I cannot show you and that is carcass casting. Now carcass casting pretty much says what it is on the tin but it's basically taking and direct impression from your carcass. So you can do this in plaster or bondo, that's car filler in the United Kingdom. Um, you can do this in alginate or silicon and there are some taxidermists who are doing incredible uh, life-size animals and using this method I remember uh, Dakota and Remington did work with scaffolding the carcass to take a cast for their baby zebra. Travis de Villiers has been doing it recently, I've seen Alice Markham do it, so there are plenty of taxidermists out there doing incredible work if this is a method that you'd like to pursue a little bit more. However you can just do casting for a small things like the skull. So if you want to do a keepsake or if you want to use the original skull in the work you could take a direct impression and that way you could use it within your mount. I know I'm being a little bit vague I just wanted to cover on that one but I'm sorry I can't give you any more information about that in this, this short video but there'll be casting videos coming later on my page. So the last method that I would like to talk to you about is a predominantly museum used technique but I know of some taxidermists who do use it in their daily work and this is the idea of using a centerboard. Now a centerboard again quite obvious it's a board made out of wood that sits in the center of your mount. It gets anchored to the base and you can then anchor wires to it and then you build up your form around it. So it kind of acts as though the, as the pillar for your work. You can then build up with wood wool or you can build up with two part polyurethane foam. If you'd like more information about this, I know Sarah Burhouse has done it at the Museum of Natural History in Nottingham, so feel free to reach out to her directly. Um, this is again a very traditional technique, so it, if you like that kind of thing and you want to go down that route, then feel free to reach out to her. So that's all I wanted to cover in this short video. If you have any questions, whether they're for me or some of the guests that I mentioned, I'm sure they wouldn't mind you contacting them directly and I'd be happy to help where I can. I'm going to be bringing you some more short videos not just featuring myself but with other taxidermists, entomologists, museum conservators, restoration experts and all sorts of other fantastic people that can help you improve and grow. So just 
stay tuned. Um, as the saying goes, there are more than one ways to skin a cat. So just do what you like, what feels good for you. Don't compare yourself to other people. At the end of the day, in this job, confidence is the most important thing. And that will be the biggest, um, the biggest thing that will make you grow. And I can say that from personal experience. So do something that's gonna give you good results. Don't worry about what other people are thinking. And at the end of the day, if you do want to improve yourself, just learn them all. Something I haven't done. <laughs> Until I speak to you again, take care, lots of love.